My name is Peter. I recognize a bunch of you already, which is great to have you back with us. Um, today we're going to be doing two short activities which will help you make some tools that you can use to make observations outside. So you need a couple of different materials. So you'll need a clear plastic bottle of some kind. So I think that may have been left off our list, but if not, you'll want something clear. Jerome, is that glass or is that plastic? Plastic. Great, I just wanted to make sure because we're gonna be cutting into it potentially. Um, although you may be able to use that just fine. So clear plastic bottle, you'll want a ruler. I have this funny L-shaped one, but you can use a regular ruler. You'll want a marker. I'm gonna use a Sharpie, which is one of those permanent markers. If you wanna use that, just be really careful with it so you don't accidentally draw on furniture or anything. You want some scissors, and you may want some parents' help for that. And I'm still going. You'll want a paper or a styrofoam plate and a pencil. So it's a whole bunch of different materials. So if you haven't collected all of those, you can grab the last few ones while Emily, I'm gonna hand, ask her to go over some basic Zoom rules while you grab everything. Good question, Liam. So today we're gonna do two projects. They're gonna be a little shorter, but we're gonna do two of them. We're gonna make a sundial and a rain gauge. And both of those are things that we can use outside and they'll both work in different types of weather. Um, so today, at least in Ithaca and outside of Ithaca where I am, it's really nice and sunny. Is it really sunny where you are today? Awesome. So our first activity that we're gonna do is something that we can use when it's really sunny. It's called a sundial. Has anyone heard of a sundial before? I see some no's. Okay, I got a thumbs up from off camera and Liam's screen. So a sundial is something that we can use that's sort of like a clock where we use the sun to tell us about what time it is. So for this activity, we need a paper plate or a styrofoam plate and a pencil. It's a pretty nice, easy activity. So what the way this works is that we use light and the position of the sun to figure out what time it is based on the shadow that an object makes. So this one's nice and easy. You're gonna take your plate and you wanna find the center of it. So it doesn't have to be the exact center. I, mine has, it's hard to tell, mine has a little bit of writing on it, so that helps me figure it out a little bit. But I wanna find the center and really carefully so you don't accidentally poke yourself. You wanna poke a hole in the center of your plate. So I got my pencil to go right through it and I'm going to have it so my pencil is sticking up nice and straight. I'll tilt this camera down a little bit. So you want it, so it's, it's okay if it's a little to the side, but if you can, you want it nice and straight. Then what you can do, I also have a marker. I forgot to say we're gonna use a marker for this, which we have for the other activity. I'm going to add a line, and I want a line sort of at the edge of my plate coming in and I'm gonna add a nice line right there. And what I can do now is, this is already, it wasn't very fast of an activity, but we made a really cool tool. So what you can do is you can take this outside or put it somewhere nice and sunny, if you have a nice outdoor space, and you can, uh, I would maybe put some rocks or something heavy along the edge so it doesn't blow away. But if I take this out, so maybe, so it's 1037 where I am right now. If I go outside at 11 o'clock, I can rotate this plate until the sun is behind the pencil and is casting a shadow right on that line that I drew. I'm gonna use a flashlight so we can see if we can get it. Can everyone see my shadow, how it's moving around? Yeah, so maybe, at 11 o'clock, we'll pretend my phone flashlight is my sunlight. If at 11 o'clock, I take it outside and my shadow is really right on that line I drew, then I would go ahead and I would add the time 11 o'clock. So I'm gonna add an 11 to it. Then what I can do is I can go out at different times of the day today and maybe I realize at 12 o'clock I would go out again and I would see where the shadow is and I would add a new line and I would write 12. And I can keep doing that at different times of the day 
and seeing where the sun is. And as that shadow moves around my clock, I can mark it off. And then if I don't move my sundial at all, I keep it way down, I can go back tomorrow and I don't need a clock anymore. So you can keep using it as a way of checking the time. Did anyone else make a sundial? You got some hands up? Another thing you could do, you could decorate it too. So I think in the, I'm going to tilt the camera back up. Um, in the picture we posted on our Facebook page, it had a really cool picture of a dog on it. Um, you could decorate it with different things that remind you about time. Is there anything you might use to decorate your sundial other than just Sharpie? Yeah, I think on Liam's screen, go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, you could draw a flower, um, like if it's in the center of the flower, you could have like a tiny time on the cent on the middle of the flower. So if it's in between like 11 or 12, you know that it's 11.50 um, or 12.50 because um, halfway through till 12 is um, 11.50. Perfect. Yeah, you could do all sorts of different things. You could also, right now mine is pretty plain. But maybe I like your idea of a flower. Maybe I make the center of my sundial a flower or the whole thing a flower. It's going to go outside. You can do this with a bunch of different things. You could think about other nature things. Maybe I put a different animal at each hour. But you'll be able to use this on a really sunny day. Do you think, can you think of a time where this wouldn't work? Go ahead. Yeah, Liam's screen again. When it rains. When it rains. Yeah. This paper plate probably won't do very well. And also if it's rainy, it might be really cloudy, so I can't use the sun. And it will probably get wet and just be a floppy sundial. That's right. Yeah, a floppy sundial, if my pencil starts going to the side, the shadow might not really stay the same. You can see just from the sunlight coming through my window that the shadow moves, even though we know the sun isn't moving. So at that point, that is your sundial. Does anyone else have a sundial they want to show? Trey, it looked like you made one. Liam's, you, you made one. Great. So right now, it's pretty basic. But I think if you make a... Ooh, I really like that. Is that Corinne's? Ooh, that's really nice. If you get a really cool picture of your sundial and you want to post it on our Facebook page, I would love to see the different designs you made. Because I bet they're going to be more exciting than mine, which just says 11 and 12. But you can go on and you can keep adding to those. And again... As long as you keep it in the same place, if you find a place outside where it's going to get a lot of sun, you'll be able to keep going back to it. So the first day is really about setting it up. All right. So our next activity is for those days when the sundial doesn't work. And it is called a rain gauge. Does anyone know what it means to gauge something? Or does anyone know what that word means? I bet we know what rain is. That's okay. So gauge is a tool that we can use to measure stuff. So we're going to make a tool out of my plastic bottle that'll let us measure how much it rains anytime we get a rainstorm coming through. So to do that, we have a couple different steps. And this is one where you might want a grown-up's help because we're going to use something sharp. So our first step is on my bottle, and you might have a different one, it gets really narrow at the top but right on the sides, it's nice and straight. And I want to cut the top of my bottle off where it's already nice and straight. So for me, I'm going to use my, I'll tilt the camera down again. I'm gonna use my marker just to give myself an idea. I probably wanna cut right around there. And again, if you have a nice straight bottle, I know Jerome had a really straight one, you probably don't even need to do this step, so that's okay. But if you have a plastic one, you might need, or you have a narrow one, you might need to cut the top off. And if you have, again, this is a little tricky, so you might want the help of a grown up. You want to punch a hole. Oop. Anyone else having trouble punching their hole through? Something that might help, I'm gonna put the top back on my bottle so it maybe doesn't, the air doesn't push out. We'll see how this works. Sometimes it's a tricky step. So we're gonna try to punch a hole. Oop. My dog does not like that sound. There we go, I got the hole. And once you have it, you can start cutting and you wanna cut the top off your bottle all the way. And I'm trying to keep it straight, but that's okay. And again, be really careful with this because I wouldn't want someone to get it. So you wanna get a grown-up's help if you need a grown-up. 
it. Did anyone else cut the top off their bottle? Liam, you got your top cut off. Awesome. Simon, you already have yours cut off. Awesome. Cool. Um, Peter said before, you probably don't need to cut yours off. Yeah, yours is nice and straight. Mine had that funny angle on it. That's okay. It looks like, Benjamin, you have a nice even one too, so you probably don't need to cut that. Yeah, Jerome, go ahead. Where should I cut on this little one? You probably don't need to cut that one. I think that's pretty close to being straight. So you'll actually be okay without cutting that one. You're lucky you got to skip a step. If you had a similar water bottle to me where it was nice and narrow, a really cool thing you can do is you can take the cap off and you can turn it upside down and you can put it inside your bottle. That way, it almost becomes a funnel. If you know a funnel, it starts off wide at the top and gets narrow at the bottom, just like our new bottle top. Okay. So does everyone have their bottle set up the way they want so it's nice and straight on the sides? Awesome. Our next step is we need a way to measure the amount of rain that we're going to get in this. So I'm going to use my ruler. And again, I have this funny L-shaped ruler because it's what I have in my house. Does anyone else have a ruler or a measuring tape or something? Something with inches or centimeters on it? Perfect. We're going to use our ruler on the side of our bottle mm -hmm. or our container, and we want to add lines with our marker. And we want to basically try to line up our ruler at the bottom of our container. And my ruler has inches on it. Maybe you have a different one. And I'm going to add a line every inch. So I have one for the one mark and the two mark, three. Four, five. I'm gonna go as far up as I can. For me, that is six inches. And can you all see it's a little hard with shiny plastic, but you can see I have a different line for each one. Then I'm going to add the number that it represents at each mark. So sort of like my ruler where I have different lines and numbers next to them, I'm gonna do the same thing with my rain gauge. So I'll add a one at the bottom. This is really hard for you to see on camera, I think, because of the shiny plastic, but we'll do our best. Two, three, four, five, and a six. I only got three. All right. Six. Now we're back up. Did everyone write their numbers again? I think it's maybe I'll use my plate as a back so you can sort of see. This is still pretty difficult. You can sort of see those numbers on there. And you can use numbers. You could also decorate your rain gauge if you wanted to, as long as you make it so the numbers are still readable or legible. Uh, Again, if you don't get six inches up at the top, I think Emily made a great comment. It doesn't rain that much very often. I just did it because I had all this room. Yeah. All right. So, after that, our rain gauge is pretty much ready to measure the rain keep forgetting. I need to keep something in the background of this. So what you can do is you can go outside with it and you'll want to figure out a way to make it tip over when it starts raining. So to do that, you could, if you have a yard and your parent is okay, you could dig a little hole that you could stick it in. You could put some rocks around the side of it, or you could maybe prop it up the side of a planted pot or something like that. And you want to make sure it's somewhere where it's not underneath a roof like this. You want to be able to get in there. And next time it rains, you can, I'm going to see if I can pour water into my cup. We'll see if I make a big mess. We're going to pour water. I'm going to try pouring water and it'll pretend almost like it's raining. And as it rains, that was my whole rainstorm. I can then go out after it's finished raining and I can see how many inches of rain fell? Can anyone see how many inches fell for my fake rainstorm? I think I saw Benjamin mouth one. That's right, it's pretty close to a one inch of rain. I could go outside and maybe sometime I go out and it's rained two inches or three. It would be a lot of rain. But I would now know how much rain fell all around my house. 
Corrine has a crack in hers. Is that what that says, Trey? That's okay. If you have a crack, it might all the water might leak out. Is that? Do you think that'll happen, Kareen and Trey? Yeah. So if that's true, you might want to. You could make another one and see if you can get it to not crack because it won't work very well if it's cracked. But it might still look cool. What you can really do is what might be really fun. Where I live outside of Ithaca, it's really well, we'll rainy. So we'll maybe every time it rains, you can wrap it on a little piece of paper. Maybe I would like to say, if it rains today, I would write down today's date, which is May 21st. And I might, after the storm ends, I might go out and check my measurement and say, on May 21st, it rained an inch. And then I could pour this out after it's done raining. And then maybe in a few days, on the 25th, it rains again. I could write down another rain event. I could go out and say, oh, it rained two inches that day. And I could keep track and you can collect data for the weather. Does anyone have a rain gauge they want to show off? Liam. Ooh, did you put any marks on yours? Ah, I see some, yeah, perfect. Benjamin, that looks really good. I like that a lot. It looks similar to mine. Trey, you have a little plastic cup. That'll be interesting. I want to see how that one works. Is anyone else working on a rain gauge? Very cool. Well, I would love to see your rain gauges in action. Mine sort of just has a little bit of water in it, but ooh. Liam, did you put a stick in there to use as a ruler? Or sorry, Jerome, I was talking to the wrong person. Jerome, did you put a stick in there to use as a ruler? Do you want to explain why you did that? So I can, so, um, cause, cause I couldn't really like just put it on there cause it would smudge off. But I wouldn't smudge off the stick, so like, Use the stick. I like that idea. So, and I flip it over. I see how many centimeters it uses. Oh, that's a really cool idea. So you could measure in two different types of units, centimeters or inches. That's another great thing. If you think that maybe rather than having the ruler on the side of the gauge, Drum has a great idea of maybe you have you can dip something that has like a ruler into your water and then you could see how far up the ruler the water goes. That's another way you could do it. I like that. If you Karen, can... Karen, you're raising your hand. Do you want to unmute yourself? When it rains, um, can you go out and test your rain gauge? You should definitely test your rain gauge. I love that. So you should put it outside before it rains. You can maybe check the weather report, or if you think it might rain, you could go out there. And then when it's sitting in the rain, once it's done raining, you could go out and check your measurement. Because this one, this one works really well in the rain, okay. and your sundial works really well in the sun. All right. Cool. And. If you want to send us pictures of your rain gauges, I would love to know how much it rained at your house. And you could go ahead and add a picture of your rain gauge with some rain water in it to our Facebook page. And then we'll be able to see what your design is. Maybe you come up with a different, more interesting way to measure rain, or rain height or inches of precipitation. Because um, I know Jerome had a cool idea I hadn't thought of. Does Corinne have a question? Can you tape it so so um it could the water could leak or if the the tape wouldn't work? That's a great solution if you have a crack in it. You could try taping it. You might what I might do if I was gonna try that, I might try taping it, and then before I went outside with it, I might try to go to my kitchen sink or have one of my grown-ups help me add some water and see if the water leaks out through the tape. And if it doesn't leak, then you have solved your problem. And if it does leak a little bit, that's okay too. 
But if it leaks a lot, you might want to come up with a new solution. Because it would be sort of funny if you went outside after a big, big rainstorm and your rain gauge told you it hadn't rained at all. If there was no water in there, you'd, you'd know something funny was going on, right? Yeah. That's a great solution, Corinne, though. I like that idea. Does anyone else have any other ideas they want to share? I had one more question. Go ahead, Trey. Um, I um put um every number of the time on my um sundial. Mm -hmm. So whatever time I go out, I can see um what time I went out and what the sun measured. Oh, I like that. So you went ahead and pre-numbered your sundial, huh? I like yeah. that. That could work really well. You might want to think about maybe the sun doesn't go in the right spot that you think. Maybe the sun moves at different distances. So you might want to, you could go out and test to see if you put the numbers in the right places. And if it's slightly off, you could move it around, but you made a really good job of, or you did a really good job of making a prediction, which is awesome. Are you going to decorate your sundial at all in any other way you think? I was going to decorate it right now. Perfect. You could decorate it in any cool way. I'm thinking you could maybe paint it or you could use some stamps or some stickers. There's some really cool things you could do. And like I said, I would love to see what your sundial ends up looking like. So if you want to make sure you post that, I think it would be great to share because my sundial looks kind of boring right now. And I would love to see what your ideas are. So maybe I can make mine look more exciting. Okay. Well, thank you all for joining us today for these different activities where we were thinking about how to make observations outside. Tomorrow, we are going to be doing an activity at 1030 where you're going to be building your own boats using some household materials. So you can check our Facebook page for the different materials you'll want. And hopefully we'll see you all at 1030 tomorrow. Does anyone have any final thoughts? I think, Trey, are you writing something out? What do we what was that? I was actually going to just say, what, what do we need for the boat activity tomorrow? Well, let me check. I'm going to look on my thing. So for your boat activity, you're going to want some container of water. So that could be a really big bowl or a plastic tub or something. And you'll want some paper or some tin foil. And you'll maybe want some pennies or some other things that we can use to weigh our boats down to see how well they float. Good question, Trey. Any other thoughts or comments you want to make before we say goodbye for the day? It's like Corinne's taping her sundial to her paper to make it like stay on. Oh, so to Corinne, you're taping your pencil down into your plate? No, no, I'm, so I'm taking the sundial to the paper. Oh. Interesting. I like that idea. That way it doesn't blow away. You, if you have a pencil that keeps flopping over, another thing you could do is maybe you could put some Play-Doh or some clay on this too so it doesn't fall over. Well, as Emily put in the, the chat, you can go ahead and share your sundial or your rain gauge on our Facebook page or email it to us at that info at sciencecenter.org so we can take a look at your really cool projects. Thank you all for joining us. I hope to see you all tomorrow at 10.30 for Making Boats.